Brad's currently muted, but everybody out there, thanks for listening to another episode of the final cast on the Paddle and Fin Network with your hosts, Matt and Brad. Gosh, you Brad, you're already screwing it up. Yeah, I can hear you. Lord. I don't know. I, nothing was muted on my end. That's weird, but it's it's whatever. It was the podcast gods not wanting to hear your voice. Yeah, I get that a lot. Nobody wants to hear my voice anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> what's been going on, man? Oh, not much. Uh, yeah, not actually nothing at all. Really, just working, and then I watched some football. I've been watching a lot of football this month. So, uh, yeah, I mean. I, when when you get to this stage in the in the season, I typically will start to migrate over to watching NBA stuff. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I I've, obviously I watch the game for all you Bengals fans out there. You can cry me a river. I'm just tired <laughs> of hearing about it. I love I'm it. So I I'm love sure. it. It was the refs. It wasn't the refs. Burrow got sacked nine times <laughs> and threw two interceptions, and they had an unruff or a, a roughing the pass or a unnecessarily roughest call. Yeah. Which was blatant. So, yeah. Yeah. But whatever. I'm so tired of hearing about it. But, um, yeah, about the same. Just working. Uh, sadly, we haven't got to go out and fish in like three weeks. Uh, yeah. I haven't been since New Year's Day. I haven't been since December. Uh, like, I'm so mine's even longer. Yeah. I'm, 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 I don't know, dude. I'm like having withdrawals. I bet, dude. It's, it's not doing it it's whatever man like right now it's cold so well like, yeah i mean it is but i really i like i'm to the I point haven't I, really, I haven't had the motivation to get out in the cold so it's whatever which for everyone out there who doesn't fish cold weather and you know me and brad do we talk about the dry suits and all the time and uh they're like well they haven't been going out there is another part of that we never spoke of which is the motivation to still be cold yeah because <laughs> the dry suits are great but if we're out there and it's 12 yeah. degrees, it feels like 40 degrees to us. So we're still chilly. Yeah. Uh, it just, it is what it is. And then you got to wake up when it's cold. Like I barely want to go to work when it's cold and my truck's been started for 20 minutes and it's hotter than Hades in there. And I still don't want to go outside. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I hear you, but, but it is what it is. Uh, everyone, this episode, if you have listened to any of, the words that have come spewing out of my mouth for the last year that I've been part of the, uh, the final cast show, you all know, I only fish one type of line. I don't fish any other brand. I've got other brand boxes that I have either given away to Brad or given away to other people or, and, or sold them, or I have extra ones that I spool my wife's Zepco 33 with, um, which now, has Sunline on it as well. This episode is going to be awesome. We've got uh, Just McLaren here from Sunline. I don't know if Brad, you're bringing or not. Justin, how you doing, man? How are you guys doing? Great to, you know, thank you for having me and uh, great to be on the show this week. Absolutely, man. Um, sure. So you want to start off the show by letting the listeners know who you are and what you do for Sunline? Yeah, so uh, I'm a sales guy, uh, you know, kind of is my real job with Sunline. Uh, I have a pretty broad territory. I sell Sunline products in uh, Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, Kansas, Iowa, Nebraska, and Illinois. Uh, So large territory, but you know, what's great about the group that I work for is we also help with a lot of product testing or uh, even, you know, prototype testing, let's say, of product because the whole group that I work for, we're all fishermen. You know, I've grown up in the fishing industry all my life, you know, and really enjoy that, you know, this whole sport, you know, from tournament fishing, even to just fun fishing. So, uh, you know, that's kind of what I do for some line. That's cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, you got, the, you got the dream job, Justin. Me and Brad talk literally all the time. Brad's in construction. I'm in retail. We always yeah. talk like, dude, you know how cool it would be if we could just get into the fishing industry? I was like, yeah, just not going to happen, though. Yeah. <laughs> so, it, you know, it's, a lot of people don't realize is uh, I think I've been gone more days this month from home than I've actually been home. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I haven't made a true cast for a bass uh, in over a month, I'd say at this point, uh, I went trout fishing this last weekend, uh, just to kind of get away and fish just a little bit. But outside of that, I have not done any fishing for, 
you know, over a month. So that's the one negative to our job is, you know, especially January, February, March is, you know, we're really locked up on the road, you know, doing a lot of traveling dealer appearances and that type of things. Yeah. It's funny you mention that because we, we've had like Z man on Plano and they all say the same thing. They're like, we work a lot, man. Yeah. We, we, we're, we're out there doing all these expos in the off season. And when the season comes, it's just like, boom, boom, boom. You're just getting ready for more orders and everything like that. So pretty crazy. Oh, for sure. I mean, I'm not saying that it's not a high paced, you know, can't fish a lot job that still does not deter me at all from wanting to be in the fishing industry, <laughs> even a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> um, but Justin, let's start the show out with kind of how you got into the industry a little bit, just a little bit of a background on you, how you got to Sunline and things like that. Yeah. So I kind of got into the industry some, you know, kind of in a sense, because my dad's been in the industry for so long. My dad, uh, you know, fished the Bassmasters Elite Series and then the Bass Pro Tour, uh, the uh, Major League Fishing Invitational. So, you know, grown up in the industry, uh, you know, always been around it, always been a dream of mine. Mine. When I graduated from high to pursue the career as a professional fisherman, uh, you know, I got mm -hmm. fortunate and won a lot of money here locally uh, nice. in a bunch of local events and then spent two years on the road trying to qualify for the elite series. And, you know, I'd made a promise to my wife that once I'd, you know, used up all that tournament winnings money that I would uh, go get a real job. And so this is kind of where I landed uh, <laughs> for a real job, but. Uh, That's you know, cool. it's still kind of a dream job too, but, uh, you know, it's not fishing by any means. Yeah. <laughs> I hear you there. <laughs> yeah. But at, at the same time, I will say at least you got to, and I'm sure you agree with this too, which at least you got to live the professional bass fisherman dream for a little bit. Yeah, I did. Uh, you know, and there are, there are days that I still kind of second guess and wish and look back, you know, and go, man, I should have waited just a little longer. Uh, before I did it and got a little more age under my uh, belt, but I didn't. So, uh, you know, now I'm here. I love every minute of, minute of what I get to do right now, you know, have made a lot of really good relationships, made a lot of cool friends uh, and, you know, got to see a lot of really cool places, mm -hmm. you know, have, have being on this side of the, the world. So. So is, is this like you rather do this instead of the, professional fisherman thing now or probably right now i would honestly yeah. say yes because i don't have to worry about relying on a green fish to uh <laughs> get a paycheck yeah. At the yeah. Yeah. yeah because we all know you know there there's no guarantee i don't yeah. care how good you're on them that you're gonna catch them uh you know you may hook them and lose them or you may uh you know they just may not bite and we've yeah. all been there you know, those tournaments that you go into, you're like, man, I, there's no doubt. I think I got a chance to win this thing. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you come in and you're like, I have no idea what happened. So <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I'm sure you've dealt with this too. And you go out there and you're on them and you get your five fish and you're like, oh yeah, I'm going to do great. And you go in and your bag is like tiny. Oh yeah. Like you thought it was great. And then one yeah. angler is like, yeah, I found three eights. And I'm just yeah. like, this is stupid. Well, <laughs> so, so that's. Been that's the thing about kayak tournaments. You can see the leaderboard almost all day long. Yeah. It's great. You, yeah. You, you know, it's, it's funny you say that because it's, uh, you know, tournament angling like I do currently still, you know, I'd say I'd get to fish probably maybe a dozen tournaments a year. So still get to fish a fair amount. The tournaments that we do fish, my boss actually comes down a uh, national sales manager for Sunline America. So he comes down from Iowa and fishes, you know, several different events in uh, Oklahoma area with me. And, you know, we've had great success since he's been doing that. Uh, you know, we were fortunate enough a couple years ago to win an event. And, but uh, it's funny because there's been several times that we've fished together even, or, you know, other par partners that I may have had that we've caught, you know, said, man, this was a really tough day and caught a mediocre bag and you come in and you're like, good gosh, how did they catch him so good? You know, and yeah, you know, yeah. It's so frustrating. I'm just, yeah, uh, for sure. 
<laughs> yeah. So before we jump into Sunline, I have my first rabbit hole of the night. In your <laughs> tournaments, have you ever just like ruined everyone's confidence but ha- by having your dad as your partner? <laughs> I there there has been a time or two my dad and I uh, have got to fish together. Honestly, I have spent more time in the boat with my uncle or, uh, you know, other team partners than, Mm -hmm. you know, outside of my dad. Uh, You know, I've got to fish a a fair amount with my dad, but at the same time, I would be shocked if I could honestly say that we've fished more than one day a year for the last 15 years together. So, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, don't get to spend a lot of time in the boat with him when we do Mm -hmm. uh, get to go out. You know, it's very enjoyable in a sense. This last year, we did fish a tournament on Tabor Rock uh lake uh in the spring and you know he being multiple day mentality like you know when you're a professional angler you be able to catch multiple days in a row he doesn't realize you know the power of the alabama rig still and he doesn't realize you know you really got to catch them all in one day Mm -hmm. you know just to pull off you know get to to win a single day event and that's one thing that's very frustrating to me as an angler is you know, I feel like I'm pretty dialed in a lot of times to what's going on and multiple day events, I think suit me better than just a single day event, just because of the, you know, actually establishing a pattern and getting out there and being able to pursue that pattern versus, you know, just getting lucky and pulling up on one stretch of bank and catching two or three, five pounders off of it. Next well, time. That's what I, that's what I do. <laughs> yeah. I can never stumble on a pattern. It's whatever. Yeah, I was about to say, I used to be good. I, the only reason I asked that question is because I was in the Marine Corps. I took leave and went down to the FLW. And uh, just I, I saw KVD pull in, and I was like, yeah, I'm not going to do anything today. I lost. <laughs> it's fine. And then you see, like, someone else pull in, and then someone else. I was like, I just gave my money away for free. So that's the only reason I ask. Um, but all right. That's funny. I promised myself I'd try to stay on track. So, Brad, start us off so I can get my head right and stay on All the right. sunline. <laughs> so, let, let's get into sunline. Uh, how long have you guys been around for? How, how did they get their start? You know, sunline uh, actually started in Japan. Uh, it's a Japanese-based company. The current day is made in Japan. Uh, it's all imported into the United States. Uh and then from importing it, uh, my boss himself is the national sales manager for Sunline America. Uh, so that's where that relationship all started. He, you know, had a vision for Sunline to, you know, be able be able to provide it to, you know, the American angler uh, because, you know, the American angler wants a premium product and that's what Sunline produces. Uh, currently, Sunline is still bigger in Japan a lot, of, a lot of in a lot of cases than it is in the U.S. Uh, to kind of put that in scale, you know, we we all understand how many people know about Sunline and how many people use Sunline in the U.S. But you know, just to think about that, that Sunline is still a larger company in Japan than the U.S. So that's really kind of a crazy fact in a sense. That is crazy yeah. because. It seems like everybody I talk to uses Sunline Sniper, <laughs> and they so you have it. to rem- you have to remember, Brad. The reason everyone you talk to uses Sunline Sniper is because you're talking to like me, Ryan. You're talking to a bunch of JDM guys. That's I've been true. using Sunline forever, and I used to get it on eBay because it would ship from old Tokyo, and uh, I would buy big spools of it, or I had to buy it online because for the longest time, if you found it in the states, it was at my favorite tackle shops, the little boat marina shops by lakes, or it was at, you know, smaller shops. And it wasn't until I would say maybe at least for me, and now this could have been before this, I'm just not noticing it. But in the last five to seven years, I've actually started seeing them in, you know, your Cabela's, your Bass Pros, mm-hmm. um, Field and Streams, which is now Open Lands, that whole weird stuff's going on. Um, Dicks, like you're seeing them in bigger box stores. That's, I mean, people are starting to get it now as an alternative and they're like, oh, this is, this line's amazing. And they're, you know, kind of preaching to the choir of the JDM guys who've had it so long. So that's Brad, everyone, you know, has been JDM for a long time. So we've been using this crap forever. I mean, I still order, I go, I like this float stuff that when I first got it, you're like, what's that? Like, this is a Japanese only product and I still order this stuff for top water and whatnot. And you can only get it in Japan. So I got you. 
But yeah, I mean, if you're going on the forums and stuff like that, I, I've always seen a lot of people like, oh, Sunline. So that's interesting. That's an interesting fact. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. Um, so how did the uh, let's 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 jump into this. I'm trying to think where I want to go because I have a lot of questions and my brain's not really super working right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> kind of what. What strategies have you guys used? Because like you said, you're a JDM, uh, not a JDM company. It's a worldwide company, but it primarily started in Japan, has a much larger presence in Japan. Um, what are kind of the things you guys are doing to kind of make it more, what's the word? Not marketable or accessible or whatever, but to let more of the U.S. market, the domestic market, know about Sunline and the benefits of it and things like that. Yeah. So one, you know, a big thing is, is having a really, you know, well-rounded pro staff, let's say, uh, you know, some lines paired with, uh, you know, a lot of previous classic champions or, uh, you know, reigning classic or defending classic champions, let's say for, uh, instance, like Jason Christie or, you know, uh, you know, Kyle Welcher finished second in the classic, uh, you know, so some line itself is, you know, pro staff, very, very well rounded, you know, from guys like Swindle to my dad, to Jason Christie to Kyle Welcher, you know, got a wide range of people in the, uh, you know, industry. And the other thing is, is Sunline uh, continues to develop very, very technique specific products, mm -hmm. uh, which mm -hmm. is, you know, very unique in a sense. Uh, they have 22 different floral carbon or, nylon based products available to the U S market. Uh, you know, just put that in perspective, 22 different, uh, materials to choose from in a sense. Mm -hmm. Uh, and every one of them is different. Uh, you know, and a guy may ask, well, how do I know what to use this one or that? That one for in uh, site itself, there is a breakdown of what to use FC sniper for what to use assassin for what to use fine float for, uh, you know, what to use nylon shock leader for system, sh system shock leader nylon, uh, you know, and then we even have a product called Sokomaki that we re released this last year at ICAST. That's a strictly a backing, uh, line just mm. to put backing on your reels. So, you know, as far as products, some lines continuing to develop lots of different products, you know, having 22 different nylon or four carbon products. And I believe there are six, uh, I think there is six, yeah, there's six braided line product, even counting what different colors all those products are available in. Cause there's several, you know, different colors available and, you know, uh, the supernatural monofilament, you know, there's an orange, there's a blue, there's a green and there's a clear. So, you know, uh, the, the array of different products that they have is really what sets us apart from you know, the other brands in our competition, because, because of that, you know, that's what, you know, I really feel like makes Sunline unique. I agree with that. And I didn't actually know you guys made technique specific line until earlier this year when me and Matt was talking about it. I mean, you, you, Matt probably owns what, like 10 different boxes or something like that. Let's go into it. <laughs> uh, so you have your sniper tried and true fluorocarbon. Yeah. So uh, like it. So, like, I can give you kind of like a rundown on uh, Sniper for, say, FC Sniper Sunline's number one selling fluorocarbon. Uh, you know, it's available in a wide range of sizes, I believe, from two pound all the way up to 30 pound now, which we just released 30 pound this last year for those guys that, you know, want a bigger line to flip with or, you know, the big glide bait guys out there wanting a bigger fluorocarbon to throw a glide bait on. Uh, yeah. FC Sniper there's a thing that Sunline does that nobody else in the industry that I've seen does is they have this deal called a radar chart and I'll pull, I have the catalogs pulled up here. And so if you look at this catalog, I'll, I'm I'll put you full screen. Up yeah. So if you look at this catalog, all these different fluorocarbons have uh, different radar charts. Mm -hmm. If you can see this mm -hmm. one, right. I'm trying to get it lined up on my screen is F FC Sniper, the radar chart, it meets really close to all of these key points that you want in a line. 
this yellow interior line is kind of where it shows what the high points of this product is. So that's, you know, something that's unique about FC Sniper compared to other fluorocarbons is it's a very well-rounded product, you know, and that's why it's so good for so many different options. So if you're out there in the industry, you know, wanting to figure out, hey, what product is built that works the best for, you know, heavy cover flipping and pitching, you know, you can get on Sunline's website and look look at what those radar charts and materials that you're interested in uh, and then see, okay, for flipping and pitching, you want, you know, high straight strength, you want mm -hmm. extreme abrasion resistance, you know, you want all these key features and that radar chart will show you what line, you know, does that the best. So. Yeah, that's cool. I I've seen that chart before and I was uh, sitting there looking at it. I thought it was interesting. Yeah, nobody else does anything like that. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, and that's you know one thing that just kind of set another thing that sets us apart, you know, from the other the other companies is it allows a customer to really figure out and hone in in on you know what is for him and what application. Yeah. So for like a just like your typical floor car every day, your everything fluorocarbon, would you go with FC Sniper then? Yeah, I mean, I personally would, you know, if it was just a general customer would say, yes, just use FC Sniper. But, you know, I like so many of the cool features that Sunline builds into their products. Mm -hmm. You know, for instance, we have Sunline Crank FC. And, you know, that that to me is probably one of my favorite products that we build that, that you know, a lot of guys probably wouldn't even think about doing with it. You know, I throw a lot of like vertical jigs and, uh, you know, when it's really cold here, I throw an underspin on it a lot because it has a lot of stretch built into it. Mm -hmm. And that stretch, you know, just allows a fish to get the bait better. But at the same time, you still have similar properties to fluorocarbon and it still is a hundred percent fluorocarbon product, mm -hmm. but you still have the sensitivity that comes with fluorocarbon. So, right. you know, that's, what's really unique about like a crank FC or, uh, you know, uh, in assassin it's kind of actually a product that you know i think a lot of anglers overlook out there that really high-end product for a budget-friendly price you know it mm -hmm. comes in 225 yard spools and it's got a, a coating on it called pi on that makes it makes that fluorocarbon very very abrasion resistant has really really good straight strength it's uh also super super slick so the castability and manageability of it is you know is really extremely what is extremely good so you know uh but overall if a guy just walked up to me and said you know what is your best fluorocarbon for day in day out everyday purposes you would probably have to say fc sniper okay. i would agree with that because yeah. i throw it on everything and that stuff ties amazing I don't know what it is, but it ties so good. <laughs> it ties amazing. It, it disappears in the water. It's amazing for that. Super strong. I mean, I've done, I, I have an issue with hook sets because I think everything I'm throwing is a, you know, flipping jig every single time. So I, I don't care how big the fish is, how big the bite is. I will just set the hook as hard as I can. And I tell you what, I've probably stressed 10 pound tests as much as it could be stressed and it never gives up. Um, I did. You kind of already mentioned it, but I kind of want to go into the difference because between like cranking and uh, FC. So a lot of guys who were Sunline aficionados, they just use Sniper for everything because it can do kind of like what you said. I've never had an issue with any technique I've ever done with it. Obviously not mm -hmm. top water, which I've thrown it for top water when I've been in a pinch and it's worked fine. It didn't float like it's supposed to, but hey, it's floor car. It's not supposed to float. Um but I had picked up cranking about two years ago and I kind of fell in love with it to where I was using it kind of like you. I was using it for cranks. I was using it for, uh, I had it on jerk baits. I had it on jigs. I was using, it. I was kind of exploring what I could do with that. And what's for the people out there. Cause I've talked to a couple people and they're like, ah, I don't, what's the difference. It's just a purple fluorocarbon box instead of a red one. <laughs> kind of explain the difference between other than just the stretch, unless that's all it is, which I doubt it the stretch for crank or the difference between cranking and then FC. Yeah. So crank FC, you know, where it really sets it apart from, you know, the other products would be the stretch built in, but there is more to it than just that, 
you know, again, it goes back to those radar charts that I showed you previously. You know, what are the best things that you can build into a line that you're going to use for a moving bait? You know, and a lot of guys look at crank and say, oh, it's for crankbaits. But truthfully, what you, you need to envision crank as is, you know, whether that be a spinner bait, a chatter bait, a horse head, a crank bait, you know, it, the sky's the limit with it, but it has, you know, some stretch built into it. So it's going to allow those fish to get that bait better. It mm -hmm. also has a product on it that I just mentioned with Assassin called PI on coating. So when you're throwing a crank bait, you know, you want it to be abrasion resistant because you're cranking it along the rocks and, you know, or dock post or whatever. So that PI on it coating allows it to have a little more abrasion resistancy. And then also it's a slicker product because of that PI on coating. So with that PI on coating, it's going to allow you to cast a lure farther with the crank. But those items, you want to be able to cast a longer distance, uh, you know, when you go to cast them to get the, you know, best running depth out of your bait. Or, you know, if you're fishing ultra shallow with a spinner bait or a chatter bait, you want, you know, more casting distances out of it. I personally have superior confidence in that crank FC. You know, I throw it a lot on a chatter bait. A couple years ago, mm. we were at Chickamauga for a uh, sales meeting and back to back days caught, you know, one just over 10 and then one right around 11, you know, with that crank FC paired to a chatterbait on 16 that's just bulletproof i haven't really ever fished with a fluorocarbon you know that's as bulletproof as that you know crank fc is so i'm gonna have to get me some because that sounds interesting like i've i what comes to mind when when after hearing you talk about it is copolymer and a lot of people out there don't like co copolymer so this seems like a really good alternative for that like i won't ever buy copolymer any, anymore i'll probably just go after this crank stuff yeah, cranking. I I never. I'm same with Justin and granted he's part of Sunline, so he's used it probably more than me. But with cranking, I've never had an issue with it. I've I kind of when I first saw it, I was like, oh, they brought a fluorocarbon out for crankbaits, and I literally was just thinking crankbaits. That's all I thought of, and I was thinking, well, yeah. it has the stretch built in. I started looking into it a little bit. It has some stretch built in, which is great. Um, because I kind of, I use that to where, hey, if I'm throwing it with a little bit of stretching, I can actually use a fast tip rod instead of a moderate on my cranks. Yep. So I can That's get a little bit say. better, a little bit better hookup and things like that um, and catch that fish. Uh, but I started, like I said, I experimented with a lot of things. I threw it on for uh, chatter baits. I threw it for crank baits, jerk baits. Uh, I did jigs a little bit. I don't know why. I think the only reason I switched out is because I ran out of it and I needed to respool a reel. That's probably the only reason I still have FC on it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I didn't notice, and you mentioned copolymer, and I kind of thought that's what it was at first. I was like, oh, it's a copolymer. I don't like copolymers. And then I was like, but I'll try it. And I threw it, and I was like, hey, well, hey, this ca casting is just as sensitive as fluorocarbon, pure. And it's still, it's almost, again, invisible in the water, mm -hmm. which is like a big thing. If I'm throwing fluorocarbon, we fish for typically smallmouth here. They're the most finic finicky, stupid fish ever, but I love <laughs> them to death. Um and I, I'm a firm believer that it's everyone likes to say it's line diameter. I, that's fine. It probably is. But I also believe it's a fish can see the line. Um, so I like to go for as translucent as possible. And that cranking has checked every box for me. And yeah. I, I just fell in love with it. I got eight spools just sitting in my to go box at all times. So, yeah, it's a great product. And, you know, it's you know, that's that's one thing that. You know, so many people don't, I don't think, realize about Sunline is we have a product for everything. So, uh, you know, if you're out there looking for something very, very specific, make sure to, you know, check it out. Make sure you're picking out the right product for what you're truly trying to do. Because there is multiple products, you know, that we do offer that, you know, are built for technique specific uh, circumstances. You said those radar charts are online, right? Yeah, you should be able to find them online on the Sunline America website. Uh, if you don't see them there, uh, they're definitely in our catalog. So if you pull up our catalog on the website, uh, you can find them on in the catalog on the website. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to find it so we can link right, it and in that's the description. What I was showing, uh, the catalog, so they're in the catalog. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to Absolutely. find it so we can link it in the description for the listeners, so people oh, can check for that sure. Out. Yeah. 
for sure. And this is one big reason why I'm such a huge fan of Sunline is a, you guys really go in depth to show the customer, like what your line's about. It's not like you look at other ones. It's like, Oh yeah, this line is great and it's awesome and everyone loves it, but there's no real in depth of why the line is great and awesome. And everybody loves it other than like some super slick promo that someone was in final cut with and made it look super pretty. Um, you really show like those radar charts. I don't know of any other company on the market that does anything like that, that really shows, you know, what this line would be better at than other lines. Cause you're kind of what I think like FC it's good for everything, but then there's certain things that like, for instance, I want to talk about flipping. Um, Cause a lot of people aren't super familiar with the flipping uh, fluorocarbon. And I have just started using this in the last year. I love it. I just don't really understand the, the, big thing behind it. I just know that it works better for flipping than anything else I've used when it comes to fluorocarbon. Um, yeah. But yeah, you guys really go like in depth with your product explanation, which I love. I mean, I've said on other shows when companies are on, they're like, Oh yeah, we really tell you what's going on. We had a battery company on and he really, you know, he has YouTube videos. He tells people about the product and you guys kind of do the same thing with these radar charts. So I think that's awesome. That, that awesome. goes a lot, a lot farther than a lot of people think. Yeah, it, you know, it really helps the customer be able to pick out, you know, what product is going to work best for him or her. Uh, so I know when I first started getting into using fluorocarbon, I was like, I don't know what to use. There's too many out yeah. here. <laughs> Would have been helpful. Yeah, I'm about to say it's it. That's another thing. I yeah. didn't even think about that or mention that. Like it, it's it's an easy way to distinguish your product against the competition. Because like Brad says, there's a fluorocarbon of every shape, size, color, flavor, price point. There's there's a fluorocarbon for everything. Um, but you guys really go into saying, hey, this would be great for this technique. This would be great for this technique. Or this is great for everything. Absolutely. So, yeah. Well, you brought up flipping. I did. That's where I want to go next. So, uh, you know, to kind of go over that, see, is uh, it's a metered product. Uh, and what that means is there's uh, 36 inches clear to 12 inches of a metered uh, meter color. Uh, mm. We're currently in the process of kind of switching flipping FC over to another product that Jason Christie helped develop called Power 2C. Uh, the products are very, very similar. Uh, the major difference in Power 2C and Flipping FC is Flipping FC is metered portion is chartreuse. And it, Matt, if you want to show that and maybe pull that off the spool, I don't know if you can actually see it, but that product has got 36 inches of clear and then 12 inches of chartreuse. So you can uh, kind of see it right, right here to where it goes. Let's see. My stupid mic gets out of my way. Damn. Yeah. And so Power 2 sees the exact same thing, but it has 12 inches of orange. I visit. Oh, that's sick. And so <laughs> the orange, honestly, it's some prototype testing on this. 1A, it seems like it shows up on muddier water better. You know, and a lot of times when you're flipping, you're flipping dingier colored water. Yeah. So that orange tends to pop a little better against that dirty water. Uh, and what's really cool about that metered product is it's almost like a strike indicator uh, or a bobber, let's say. Uh, because a lot of times at certain light levels, it's really hard to see a clearer fluorocarbon against the wall. Mm hmm. And, you know, a fish may get your bait I'm off with it and you'll never realize it because you weren't really able to see your line well. Where mm -hmm. Flipping FC or Power 2C, which is the new product replacing it, uh, you're able to see it because there's always kind of the way it falls and lands in the water. There's always going to be a section of that metered portion of it that is close to the surface of the water. So it kind of turns into a you know, bobber for say, or strike indicator, yeah. which is really, really neat. Uh, and, you know, high bright light against muddy water. It makes a world of difference when you're flipping bushes or flipping grass, if you're using fluorocarbon or, you know, you know, whatever the case may be of being able to pick up that product, because we all know there's a lot of times, especially around the spawn when, a you know, you flip it up against a lay down or in a bush and you're sitting there holding it and you're like, man, I, I feel, you know, something weird going yeah. on when you don't see your line 
where that flipping, you'll see your line moving off. And, you know, a traditional clear floor car when you can't hardly pick it up and see it just because of, you know, the water and, you know, high bright light or real low light, just not being able to pick up your actual line against the water. So that's what's really unique about flipping your power to see, uh, you know, and if you haven't used those products, those products are designed for up close and personal fishing, high impact, uh, you know, and we all know from watching fishing on TV, when you set watch Chase and Christy set the hook, he's got one heck of an aggressive hook set. So, mm -hmm. you know, if that if that product will hold up to the, you know, beat down he puts it up against, you know, it's going to hold up to about any other guy's, you know, application that he can put it against or hook set. Let's say. Uh, you know, a lot of guys, Matt, I know you may, I just want to bring this up. A lot of guys, you know, want to fault the floor carbon or fault the line mm -hmm. for breaking. Mm -hmm. Okay. And truthfully, what the problem is nine times out of 10, I would say is floor carbon has a tendency to burn itself. Mm -hmm. So if you don't tie your knots properly, uh, and wet your line properly, when you go to tie your knot, you're going to burn the product. I don't care yeah. if it's Sunline. I don't care if it's the other brands of fluorocarbon. Mm -hmm. If you burn the product, you're going to cause stress on it and cause it to potentially break. Yeah, uh, That's another thing Sunline's done and taking steps and making sure to show people how to tie the proper knots is on our website. And it's one of our most viewed pages on our website is mm -hmm. there's a link on there that you can click called knots. And it will show you how to tie the proper knots uh, or how, you're, how to tie a San Diego jam properly. You know, it shows you how to do that. And so I can't stress that enough. You know, so many guys I watch tie a Palomar and they just kind of whip it all together, run their bait through it and pull it tight. Well, that yeah. doesn't work with <laughs> If you do that with four carbon, you've burned it more than likely. And mm -hmm. you're going to cause that product to break. So yeah. just keep that in mind, you know. I don't care what fluorocarbon it is. You can burn it all. Uh, you can break it all. Uh, yep. And if you're not tying your line, you know, to your hook or, you know, together with your braid properly, you're going to have knot failure. And that's yep. not the line's fault, as bad as I hate to say it. It is not. It's it's customer error. So, you know, we have put those uh, knot videos on our website to help the customer understand how to properly tie a knot. And it's a big thing. You know, It, I, I can honestly say in the tournaments I've fished, I don't know that there's ever been a time I can truly say that my knot or my line failed me. You mm -hmm. know, if my line failed, it was truly one A, I wasn't paying attention to it. And it had gotten all scuffed up or beat up from, you know, not retiring for half a day or two on, you know, uh, on not tying my knot properly. So, you know, just yeah. keep that in mind when you're fishing. You know, I, I worked in a tackle store before I did this for 16 years. So heard all the horror stories of, man, this line sucks you yeah. know, from every angler yeah. in the world. Uh, <laughs> and truthfully, I don't know that I can honestly say it's ever the line's fault. Yeah. Uh, where it's a lot of times the, the actual angler's fault for not tying the knot properly. So, yeah, I, I can attest to that because I've, tied a knot and i've seen like little frays coming off and i'm like dang it yep. i gotta retie that <laughs> yep so just yeah you know, i can't i can't stress that enough is just you know have there was a video many years ago that i saw swindle put out you know it, he said something to the effect of you know if you can't trust your knot you know then you buy as well retie it there's no sense in like yanking on it and pulling on it you know that's something else that i see guys all the time that you know are really good anglers that you would think would know better mm -hmm. you know they would grab their jig with one hand and the line in the other and like really yank it to make sure it was tight well man when you did that you burn that material and you really put a lot of pressure on that material and truthfully you need to cut it and retie it yeah. so you know just keep that in mind if you don't have confidence in how you tied your knot maybe retie it or check out, you know, the videos that we have on the website to help you tie those knots better and, you know, get to where you confidently can, you know, tie a knot, cut your tag, tag ends and just go fish with it. Because uh, every time you go yanking on it or pulling on it with 
fluorocarbon-based product dress on the materials. So, uh, you know, that's one thing that's unique about fluorocarbon versus mono. Mono, tip, you know, has more forgiveness and stretch in it. Fluorocarbon has 30% less stretch than monofilament or nylon. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you pull on it, it's going to cause more burn effect yeah. versus mono or nylon is going to, you know, give more, let's say. So do you guys put something on your line to make, make it tie a little bit better? It just seems like your guys' line is like real silky smooth. Well, a lot of that's just the suppleness to it. You know, there are products that have something on the line. You know, I mentioned PI on. Uh, mm -hmm. There's Crank FC that has that on it. There's Assassin that has that on it. Uh, and Do Strike has it on it. And then the new Mabaroshi uh, Sunline uh, leader material has it on it. Mm -hmm. uh, so that those products have PI on coating on it. Might have missed one, uh, one or two other ones, but those are the main ones. Uh, that's going to make it a little smoother that mm -hmm. what you feel with sniper when you tie it is just the suppleness of it. It's super limp. Uh, so that makes it tie a lot better or easier. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what makes sniper, you know, such a fan favorite, let's say is just because of how limp and supple it is. Interesting. Oh yeah. And I, I mean, I'll test to that. That's one big reason uh, Brad earlier this season had switched lines for just a little bit regretted it every time he went fishing um because i still don't know why it just kept every, breaking off it was weird it was it was poo line that's just how it is man um <laughs> but when he right when he started using sunlining and he's like man it's just this is so much smoother and i was like yeah i don't know what they do but it is way smoother than anything else i've ever used and i've used every big name you can speak of all the other brands i've used them all um and i never stay with anything else very long i'm always right back to sunline in a heartbeat um one thing i kind of want to get into next uh is we've already talked about sunline obviously makes something for everything but a lot of companies including sunline are making leader materials that are separate from their fluorocarbon spools um so you have like fc sniper which is the fluorocarbon and then you guys have a leader material what is the, as to the people who kind of like for me, I use FC for everything, whether it's leader material or my main line or doesn't matter. Um, what's the benefits to using an actual leader material? Like what's the differences there? Yeah. So it, it kind of goes back to the point of those radar charts. Okay. On a leader material, you want the best of everything. Because you're not putting that on your real force. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of leader material that we build that is actually the highest end product you can possibly build. But if you spooled it up on our spinning reel or a bait casting reel, you would think it was terrible fishing on it <laughs> because it's not supple. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So with the leader material, what's unique about it is we build all those really key features into that product and make it really good at several key things that a leader needs to be good at. Like, for, for instance, a brand new leader is called uh, Tornado V-Hard. And I actually got to prototype test this a fair amount uh, over the last couple winters, uh, fishing on Tabor Rock, really, really deep water. Uh, and Tornado V-Hard is a straight up leader material that I can honestly say it's the best stuff that I've ever used for a leader. You know, it has super high knot strength, which is really, really important when you're tying your braid to your fluorocarbon. Mm -hmm. uh, it has super high straight strength. So you can use, get away with using a smaller material product because of the strength of it. Uh, the sensitivity is huge, which then pairs really well with a braided material. So it kind of almost, replicates fishing a straight braid where you're still got the invisibility characteristics of a fluorocarbon uh abrasion resistancy and it's slick you know where it doesn't do well is uh the suppleness and the and the and the stretch so mm -hmm. you know that that is the negatives to that so if you put that straight on a, a, a casting rod and went to cast it it's going to coil up and be a nightmare. Uh, mm -hmm. And you set the hook on it super hard. You know, uh, you may not like it because it's not, it's not going to have any stretch in it. Uh, 
But as far as the overall performance I've had out of that line, it is a PI on coded product uh, and it is a triple process product. So that means it's been in a sense through the process of building it three, you know, three times and in, in, you know, let's say layman's terms for say, uh, uh, just so a customer understands, it, it's a really, really high end product. Now, the price point on a liter material is very expensive compared to a fluorocarbon, because if you look at it, a liter material on average is going to cost you, let's say, thirteen ninety nine ish up to you know twenty twenty plus dollars for fifty yards. Hmm. Uh, they do come on really nice little fifty yard spools, so it's small and easy to keep in the boat if you are using spinning rod applications, but you know, to pay for a premium product like that, that you get, there's no sense in cutting corners, let's say on a leader material, because it's very important to landing fish. Mm -hmm. If you have not good leader material, you can cost yourself, you know, money in a tournament or cost yourself losing the fish of a lifetime if you're not yep. using proper equipment. So some line does offer now different four carbon leader materials. And then several, I'm sorry, yeah, three different fluorocarbon leader materials that kind of go towards the bass market, let's say. We do have two larger leader materials that are used for saltwater uh, mm. markets that are, that, that are uh, fluorocarbon. And then we have a new nylon leader material, uh, you know, that's for a guy that needs a little stretch on, let's say, a topwater or something like that. But once you can use braid and then add, you know, four or five feet of nylon to give yourself just a little give at the end of your product. And it's a, it's a nylon or monofilament leader material. So uh, technically there's four leader material, different leader materials for, let's say hmm. the freshwater market. Uh, and then there's three leader materials for the saltwater market. <laughs> and you know, they all have, you know, their own application. So uh me personally though if i'm buying a sunline leader material right now now uh to use day in tornado v mm. which we just released this last year at icast fantastic stuff it's it's funny because like i'll usually just buy fc sniper and i'll reel or i'll spool up my reel with it and then whatever i have left over with that that's what i use for my leader material yeah <laughs> yeah there's nothing wrong with that there's a lot of very high-end professional anglers that do that i'm not saying don't do that it's just we you know again we go above and beyond at sunline and build a product for all the different applications yeah and it's i mean how much is it for like the 50 uh yard spool there, you know, they range in prices, uh, you know, anywhere from, I want to say $13.99 up to in the $20 range, uh, just depending on what product it is. The Tornado V Hard's the highest end product. Uh, the Mabaroshi is a brand new product, I think two years ago uh, at ICAST. That it's a leader material that is camouflage color, let's say. So it goes uh, six different colors. And it goes from like a green, a brown uh, to another type of green, you know, and it's just kind of it makes a camo look to it. So it's using it in places with vegetation. Hmm. That's cool. I know. Uh, so, yeah, that's I mean, it's still cheaper than buying like an actual 200 yard yeah. spool of sniper. Oh, so. yeah. Well, still cheaper than buying sniper. And, you know, it's, it's on a really, really nice small spool uh you know that you can just kind of keep in the boat yeah uh, so perfect for kayak guys too like me and yeah, matt for sure for sure <laughs> yeah i um, mean it goes a long way and a lot of things with leader stuff is people it, they'll tighten it they kind of get a little sticker shocked um because i talked to i worked in a tackle shop before what i'm doing now and it was they'd get a little sticker shock from leader because they'd be like oh i'm spending 16 bucks for 50 yards that's not gonna last what they don't realize is you're only putting like one to five feet on. Yeah, you're leader's not spooling your spool up. Yeah. I was gonna say one spool of leader can last you the whole year. Yeah, yeah, like all day long, depending on how much you change. So yeah, and if you take care of your fluorocarbon products, you know that it'll last a long time. 
you know, mm -hmm. if you keep it at room temperature, you know, keep it in, you know, a non UV environment that it's not getting UV light to it. It'll last for a long, long time. So, you know, keep, keep that in mind as well. You know, like you don't put a whole bunch of leader on a rod. Like yeah. I think most uh, leader that I'll ever put on is I go t traditionally on a spinning rod. I'll go, the length of the rod and then back through the guides and then around my spinning reel twice. Uh, so then you end up with, let's say 16 feet of, you know, leader on your line. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that, that's nothing when you break it down in yards, it's what five yards, mm -hmm. a little over five yards. Uh, and there's 50 yards on that spool. So I can do that, you know, however many more times and, you know, not run out of material and that, you know, if you put that much leader material on your rod, you know, a lot of times that'll last you two or three trips out to the lake. Mm -hmm. And for no more than I use a spinning rod, it's just like, I can make it, I can make one of those spools of leader material last for forever because the product's, you know, extremely good for leader material. And so you're not, it doesn't break down. And two, you know, you get a fair amount and I, you know, I got one of those spools. It's still a prototype spool from three years ago that I still have product on. Uh, yeah. So, but it's, it, it's good stuff. So check it out if you're not using any, you know, spe specified leader material as its place in the industry. I'll have to check that out. It, oh yeah. You, you mentioned, um, uh, um, putting the leader material on braid do you guys uh have a, a braid that you guys make yeah so we have yeah so we have uh 22 different four carbon or ni nylons and we have six different braids uh we have a braid that's our newest braid called uh a saw guy x plasma saw guy uh it's a peon coated braid there it is right there uh it's a PI on coated braid. It comes in two different colors. Uh, the one on that just shows the version. And then there's a dark green version of that as well. The light green version is built in the smaller sizes. I want to say it's built in light green up to 20, 18 pounds. Uh, and then the dark green goes from all the small sizes up to 50 pounds. Uh, and it's plasma coated. So what makes that unique is... Uh, is those guys throwing an Alabama rig when it's really, really cold braids, really bad about absorbing water mm -hmm. and crystallizing uh, and freezing. Yeah. And then the braid freezing. Well, that peon coating, even on the fluorocarbon, it makes it uh, almost in a sense, water repellent. Uh, so it doesn't absorb water as bad. So if you're looking for a product that, you know, you can use in extreme cold conditions and not freeze, that stuff is one to take a look at. Uh, then you have the PE stuff. So you have PE4, which is a four strand braid, and then PE8, which is an eight strand braid. A PE braid, the big difference there is the uh, the cost effectiveness, let's say, mm -hmm. uh, that the customer is actually going to see to be the true big difference, where an eight strand braid is you know, more expensive to make. Uh, so you have PE4, PE8, X Plasma. Then you have SX1, which is a really, really popular braid that a lot of guys like to use on spinning rod applications at Sunline Builds. And then the last one that you have is braid, the Fire D braid, which is a sinking braid. So, uh, you know, there's, again, a wide range of product out there for uh you know, braided lines as well that they all have their own applications. And I forgot to mention FX2, which is our frogging and flipping braids. Mm. That's cool. I didn't realize you guys had a braid. <laughs> I, well, oh, I've never yeah. seen it in stores. So yeah, it's uh it's great. So I, that was the only thing I didn't use sunline related up to the end of, or the beginning of last year was I was always using, Another brand's braid. Um, a lot of people use it. Everyone really uses it. And then I had a buddy, Cam, Brad, for you, because you know who Cam is. He uh, He's like, yeah, I just picked up the uh, Exani. And I was like, oh, I didn't know that was a thing. Like, I knew the, uh, the, the FX braid was there. But here in Ohio, I don't frog ever. And yeah. when I'm flipping, I'm usually flipping 
smaller stuff. There's not a whole lot of cover that I'm really throwing big stuff. Um, and, and I got some and I got the 12 pound cause I was like, Oh, I want it's backer. I want it backer on my Ned rig rod and I really want to be able to see it. So I got the high vis stuff and that stuff is amazing. Um, Brad, you got first hand of that because you remember when I got a BFS rod and I cast that net, you cast that Ned rig forever. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you're like, oh, this this casts so well. And I was like, no, man, it's it's well, it's the rod, but it's also the braid because it casts fantastic. And that's yeah. that was that Exani braid. And it, I mean, I tell you yeah. what, I can A, bomb a cast, B, C, everything. It's more than enough sturdy. I've set the hook harder than I again than I probably should. And it works great. And it, it holds on to a leader like nothing else. So, absolutely. Um, I had one other question. I don't know if Matt has any more after this, but, uh, do you, do you suggest like any kind of line conditioner for fluorocarbon at all? Or. I mean, guys use it. I personally don't use it. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't really think there's a need for it. Uh, any line that you put on your reel over time is going to start breaking down the more mm -hmm. you use it. Uh, so, you know, my best case, example to tell somebody would be to you know change your train change your line uh you know after so many trips out change your line because it does cause fatigue Look, you know from trying to break a bait off when you're stuck in a rock or whatever you know every time you do that stuff to fluorocarbon especially it does cause fatigue to it so you know the more you fatigue that product the worse it's going to be and over time you know uh when it's on a little bitty spool and in a wounded uh tight you know little spool wound up tight you know it's going to cause coiling to the product so that's why you always notice when you put brand new fresh line on a reel it feels so good and that's all yeah. yeah super nice and you're like man this is awesome it stays on there for three months and you pull it off it looks like a, a, a you know it's cooled up spring uh yeah. so just change your line would be my best suggestion to it i'm not saying you can't use a conditioner Cause those do help at times, but you know, if I feel like I need to condition them online, I'm going to change it. Yeah. That makes sense. Matt. I had nothing else, man. We covered like everything that I wanted to cover. Um, I'm trying to think. No, I've got nothing else. If you've got nothing else, Justin, go ahead and let everybody know where they can find you on socials website, the whole nine. Yeah, so check us out, uh, sunlineamerica.com uh, would be our website. And then I believe it's at sunline underscore America on Instagram. And then uh, it would be Sunline America on Facebook. So uh, check us out. And if you guys ever have any questions, you know, about anything, don't hesitate to send Sunline a private message, you know, on any of our social media platforms. We'll get back to you. Uh, I personally don't monitor it, but I'm in daily communications with the guy that does monitor it. And all the time he's communicating. So if you have a specific question about something, check it out. Awesome. Well, guys, uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, Justin, thanks for coming on the show and taking your time to explain some oh, stuff to sure. us and everything. So, uh, with that said, we'll see you guys next week and uh, have a good one. Thank you, guys. Peace.